Hello everyone. This is the F part of structure and germination of seeds. In the previous session, we have seen the conditions necessary for germination of seeds and that we are proving with the help of experiments. Today, we are going to prove that oxygen is essential for the germination of seeds. In the previous session, we have seen the importance of water and the effect of temperature on the germination of seed. And today, we will prove that oxygen is essential for germination of seeds. We require two conical flasks, cotton wool or blotting paper, soaked seeds of gram, two small test tubes, thread, pyrogallic acid, NOH that is sodium hydroxide, corks, etc. Procedure. Take two conical flasks and label them as A and B. Spread a moist cotton wool in each flask and place some soaked gram seeds on it. See children, we have taken two conical flasks and we have labeled them as A and B. Then, we have taken the moist cotton wool or you can take blotting paper also. Moist cotton wool and we have placed the moist cotton wool in both the flask that is A and B. Then we have taken the equal number of gram seeds soaked in water and we have placed that soaked seeds on the moist blot, uh, this cotton wool or the blotting paper. Hang a small test tube containing pyrogallic acid dissolved in NaOH in flask A with the help of a thread. See here in flask A children, we have in both the flask we have hanged a test tube with the help of a thread. In this conical flask A, in this test tube we have taken pyrogallic acid which is dissolved in sodium hydroxide. And in flask B is hanged similar test tube but containing water. See in flask A we have in this test tube we have taken pyrogallic acid dissolved in NOH and here in this test tube we have taken only water. Close the mouths of both the flask with airtight cork so that no air enters in them from outside. After placing this we have closed the mouth of these two conical flasks with the help of airtight cork so that no air enter this conical flask. Place both the flasks at room temperature for few days. Now we have left this both these conical flasks at room temperature and then we will see after few days what changes or what observations we can make. Seeds do not germinate in flask A whereas they germinate properly in flask B. So what we have observed children we have observed that after few days no seeds have germinated in flask A but in flask B they have germinated properly. Now what is the reason behind that? Why the seeds have not germinated in flask A and why they have germinated in flask B. So let us see. The seeds do not germinate in flask A. See children, why the seeds do not germinate in flask A? This is the reason. Why they have not germinated? Because the oxygen in it is absorbed by the alkaline pyrogallic acid and is not available to the seeds. So children, whatever oxygen is present here in this conical flask, is absorbed by this alkaline pyrogallic acid. So no oxygen is available to these seeds. Since there is absence of oxygen, the seeds will not germinate. That is the reason the seeds have not germinated in flask A. On the other hand, seeds in flask B get oxygen and hence germinate. So here in this water is present here and this flask B contains oxygen because there is nothing, no, uh, uh, water does not absorb uh, this oxygen. So, oxygen is available to the 
seeds and in presence of oxygen they have germinated so this experiment proves that oxygen is essential for the germination of seeds so what is the uh, use of this pyrogallic acid the use of here we have taken pyrogallic acid because or we can say what is the function of pyrogallic acid here the function of pyrogallic acid is to absorb the oxygen which is present here in the conical flask so the next experiment is this to demonstrate that water oxygen and optimum temperatures are necessary for the germination of seed see in the previous experiments we have taken each factor at one time we have studied each factor one time oxygen we have seen water we have seen the effect of optimum temperature we have seen now we have taken all these we will study all these three conditions in one experiment and this experiment is known as the three bean seed experiment children this experiment is very very important and this experiment is known as the three bean seed experiment so for this experiment we require a beaker half filled with water glass slide or a wooden plate a thread three bean seeds we require these things for the experiment we require a beaker half filled with water a glass slide or a wooden plate a thread or three bean seeds now see here three bean seeds are tied to the glass slide or wooden plate now see here this figure this is a beaker it is half filled with water and this one is the glass slide on this glass slide we have tied three bean seeds this is the first seed this is seed b and this is seed c have you seen this children this is the beaker containing it is half filled with water this is the glass slide or you can take a wooden plate also wooden uh, this uh, plate and you have to tie three seeds like this this is the seed a it is tied with a thread on this slab or on this plate or on this slide this is the second seed it is labeled as b and it is it is also tied with a thread and this is the seed c or the third seed this seed is also tied with a thread now see what we have to do and kept in a beaker half filled with water in such a way that the top seed a is out of water middle seed b is partly submerged in water whereas the lower seed c is completely submerged in water now see here children after tying this uh, three seeds separately on this glass slide we will insert this glass slide in this beaker which is containing water in such a way that the upper seed or the seed a remains completely out of water the seed b is partly in water and partly it is above the water and the third seed or the c seed is completely submerged in water this is very clear in this experiment you can see here in this figure also it is above the water this is partly in water and partly above half in water half above the water and this third seed is completely submerged in water then place the beaker in a warm airy room for few days now leave this beaker in a airy room that is at room temperature we can say now for a few days and then after few days we will see what changes takes place in that in these seeds the top seed a does not germinate so what changes we have seen what obs what observations we have seen the seed a does not germinate the middle seed b germinates properly see here the middle seed which is half in water half above the water germinates properly you can see here the germination the lower seed c starts germinating but germination soon stops the third seed starts in this third seed germination starts but after some time the germination stops now we will see why this happened or what is the reason behind 
it why the seed a does not germinate why the seed b germinates and why the c seed c which is in water starts germinating but after some times the germination stops so we will see what reasons is there behind this the above experiment proves that water and oxygen are necessary for the germination of seed see we have made this experiment we have set up this experiment to prove that water oxygen is necessary for the germination of seeds the middle seed b germinates as it gets both the water as well as oxygen so the middle seed germinates why the middle seed germinated because it is getting proper air or oxygen and proper water for germination so the seed germinated here in this the top seed a does not germinate as it does not get water and gets only gets oxygen only the seed a does not germinate because it does not get water see it is above water no water is present so water is not available but oxygen is there in the air so a oxygen is present but water is not present so the germination doesn't take place in the seed a whereas the lower seed c gets water the oxygen dissolved in water is available to the seed in the beginning hence it starts germinating but when oxygen dissolved in water is used up by the seed it stops further germination see here this seed c it is submerged in water so water is available here oxygen is also present this uh, water contains dissolved oxygen so it is getting oxygen also so the seed started germination germinating because it is getting both oxygen and water but as soon as the oxygen which is present here in the water dissolved oxygen which is present here in water is used up the seed stops germinating because it is not getting oxygen it is getting only water so it stops germinating so now children it is clear why the seeds a doesn't germinate because it is not getting water it get, it is getting only oxygen so it will not germinate this seed b germinated because it is getting both oxygen and water so it germinates properly seed c started germinating because it is getting water here it is getting um, it has uh, it is uh, used up oxygen which is present here in the water it is it has used up all the oxygen as long as oxygen is present it starts germinating but as soon as the dissolved oxygen is used up it stops germinating because there is no supply of oxygen in this experiment the effect of temperature is not proved directly if a beaker similar to the one as in the above experiment is placed in the refrigerator or above 50 degrees celsius none of the three seeds will undergo germination it will prove the importance of optimum temperature so children if from this experiment we cannot prove that uh, this uh, effect of temperature but if we will make similar arrangement if another in another beaker and if you will keep that beaker in refrigerator or at a temperature above 50 degree celsius then we will see that no seed whether a b and c they will not germinate so by that we can prove the effect of temperature so here we end this